Hello and welcome back with Marisol Bay and what I think should be the conclusion of our romance with Liam. We left off mid-date <laughs> with Wyatt at the aquarium. Uh, why is that music so loud for me? There we go. Wyatt, uh, Wyatt and I... There we go. Wyatt and I are seated in the most beautiful arrangement I've ever seen at any summer resort. A vast aquarium tank stretches over and around the dining area. I can see the fish swim around us from all angles. All while I get to eat what Wyatt claims is the second best food at Marisol Bay. Please tell me that I don't serve fish here. <laughs> don't worry. The fishies won't be watching us eat their brethren. I glanced over the menu. There were quite a few options, but I settled on something simple. A chicken sandwich and sweet potato fries. Wyatt gets a parmesan crusted steak with broccoli on the side. I remember when I first bumped into you, you were fascinated by this place. I could see it in your eyes. It reminds me of all the things I used to do with my family when I was younger. We used to go to aquariums, zoos, theme parks, resorts. My voice trails off as I watch an angelfish swim to the left of us leisurely. Then, I grew up and went to college. I started acting and forgot about everything else, even spending time with my family. It's not that we don't have a good relationship or anything, but things are just normal. No more vacations just for the heck of it. I see my parents when I go home, but that's about all there is to it. As I finish my thought, the waiter places our food in front of us. It smells absolutely delicious. I assume that Wyatt is going to dig in, but he doesn't even pick up his fork. He's still looking directly at me, this time with a slight frown. I only really had one adventure growing up. Marisol Bay. My younger brother and I spent so much time here. We'd play on the sand, building sandcastles for hours. We'd run around the lobby while Mrs. V yelled at us for not to make a <laughs> not to mess up the waxed floors. No way. Mrs. V has been around here all that time? She said at the beginning that she's been here for as long as the place has been here. It's hard to imagine her yelling at anyone, especially young Wyatt. Now that I think about it, that's probably why Wyatt walks around so casually and all the staff know him. He's been visiting this place since he was a child. Oh yes. She's been working here before I even got here too. She could, she could tell you stories of what she's seen. As he talks about his memories, Wyatt smiles. It feels different from his usual sly grin though. There's something almost melancholic about it. Marisol Bay isn't a bad place to have an adventure. No. Suppose not. There are still some traces of adventure left to be had. Not for Pirates Pro. If, <laughs> if not for Pirates Cove, I'd have cut my stay here short. Madula Pearl and all that other upscale nonsense takes the fun out of everything. You've got to dress a certain way, act a certain way, have a certain amount of money. It's ridiculous. But when I go to the lookout. I get to, I get a good meal, a beautiful view, the sound of families having fun all around me. It's so nice. And then I can go to the beach and talk to my favourite captain and be his first matey for a little bit. It's a great time. Kind of like I'm a kid all over again. Hearing Wyatt say these things, I can't help but agree with him. There's not a problem with upscale amenities, but they're more targeted to a specific demographic of people. 
Whereas the experience I'm creating as Captain Bailey can be more widely enjoyed. Thank you. So, thank you for making my summer a really good one, Cairo. I know I joke a lot, but I really do appreciate all the time I've spent with you. I feel the same way about him. My summer working at Marisol Bay wouldn't have been as enjoyable without him popping up and making me laugh every morning. This is the part where you tell me to stop rambling. I thought about it, but I like hearing you talk. How do you now? He raised his left brow in an exaggerated fashion and leaned forward with a wink. I roll my eyes and pick up a french fry. Then you're fine with me talking for a little longer? I want to explain why I've been... gone. As he says this, I swear I see him take in a large breath of air. I love every minute I spend at Marisol Bay, but not everything can be an adventure. I gotta be a little selfless sometimes. Yeah. When my parents got divorced, my little brother moved in with my dad and my mum decided she didn't need help and took on the life of a single mother. She worked extremely hard to give me what I have and I want to repay that back. My mother's birthday is coming up and I have been planning a top secret scavenger hunt for her. She'll go through a bunch of memories we've had together and end right here at Marisol Bay. It's a bit of work to handle on my own, so Brooke has been helping me out with the whole thing. Wow, that is really thoughtful of you. It's very clear that Wyatt prioritizes the time spent with his family and the memories he makes with people he cares about. Mm. And I'm hearing there's this big event that Brooke is planning at the lookout, and I was going to see if perhaps we can include my tribute to my mother in it. Brooke tells me you're conflicted about helping out because Liam asked you first. It's understandable. The man probably has a five-part plan with every single step accounted for. <laughs> that does sound like something Liam would do. Wyatt nods and finally begins to sub cut the steak, which is probably cold by now. I don't wish ill on anyone's dreams, especially Liam, because I know this resort means the world to him. I am, however, trying to recruit you to mine and Brooke's cause. If our event is a success, it will show the resort owner that Marisol Bay flourishes as a family business. When you're Captain Bailey, you create so many amazing memories for people. It's not about the money or the promotions. Brooke and I want to keep the place we visit as kids. A fun and amazing experience, just like we had. If you choose to help Liam with his dream, there's no harm. If Liam asked you to help, he must truly believe in your talent. For as long as I've known him, I've never heard him ask for assistance from anyone. Brooke and I will still fight for our dream, and there won't be any hard feelings. As he finishes his statement, White begins to eat his steak ravenously, as if he's never eaten before in his life. So yummy. He's, he speaks like a serious conversation has never happened at all. I owe him the courtesy of thinking long and hard about this decision. Because now not only Brooke and Liam's dreams are on my shoulders, but Wyatt's as well. I can't let anyone down. The two of us barely get in any more words as we eat our lunch. When it's time to pay, Wyatt reaches for the check with a wry grin, but I shake my head fervently. No way, I'm paying for my own meal. But I invited you out, so it's only fair. No, no. That only applies if this is a date. Well, who says it's not a date? The two of us stare at each other. Wyatt smirks at me, almost like a challenge. Stop teasing me. White winks at me, takes a black card from his wallet and holds it up. Wait, you have one of those? Yes. Hmm, are you shocked? Every single person I've met that has one of those is a snob. Are you saying I'm a snob? No, No, of course not. White nods his head, the, grid ne the, the, grid, the grin never leaving his face. This is the most cost-effective solution for me being here every day, don't you think? 
I get most meal comps for a monthly fee. Considering how much you look at the look out, it pays for itself. Exactly. He places his card into the receipt holder and places it under the table with his hand with his hand over the lever. Thank you. Thank you for the fun time out, Cairo. Did you just I cross my arms over my chest and glare at the man. Hey! You swindled me! Remove your hand now and let me pay for my meal. I have a better idea. I highly doubt that. Next time we go out, you can pick up the tab. I was trying to con me into going out with you again. Well... Is it working? No. No, it's not. <laughs> he lets out an exaggerated, drawn-out sigh, dipping his head low. Are you sure you're not an actor? Why at last, looking up at one with a goofy grin. Pretty good, right? As we're talking, the waiter comes back and Wyatt slides him the receipt holder with his black card. When the waiter brings it back, Wyatt stands up. This was fun and I want to do it again, but... Hmm? I gotta run. Oh yeah, of course. Thanks for the company and lunch. We say our goodbyes and head our separate ways. There's not much else to do at Marisol Bay today, so I head home. The weekend rolls by rather quickly, and I'm actually pretty happy about it. Unfortunately, I don't have any days off on the, on the weekends because these are the busiest days of the season. But I do have something else to look forward to. Last week, after telling Liam that I wanted to be friends outside of work, he invited me to have dinner at his place after our shift. This will be a good time to get to know Liam without the golden nameplate and the stuffy air about him. The drive to his place is a little long. He lives on the outskirts of the central city. It's a nice area, which doesn't shock me at all. It'd be strange to see him in a different setting. After sending Liam a text asking if I can park in his driveway, I close my car door and knock on the door to his house. Cairo. Hello, Cairo. He steps aside and ushers me into his tidy home. There are aren't many pictures hanging up around the place. In fact, there's not much of anything but a television set, an end table, a few chairs and a couch. William is a minimalist, it seems. Lovely place you've got here. Thank you. I'm aware this style doesn't appeal to everyone. It suits you very well. Should I be offended by that? <laughs> he motions to the couch and I take a seat. Why? Because I think a clean and tidy environment suits your personality more than a cluttered home like mine? Nice answer. The food is still in the oven for about 15 more minutes, but the table is all set. He takes a seat next to me and runs a hand through his hair like he's exhausted and leans back into the couch. Did... Did you cook me a four-course meal or something? Five courses, actually. No. Five courses? I hold it in my stomach and look down. I don't know if I can eat all that. <laughs> what about Captain Bailey's figure? You can't have a dinner date without an antipasto and dessert. I won't change my mind on that. <laughs> my heart leaps into my throat at the word date. I don't know if he's cleverly hid that into his speech to test the waters or... If he didn't realize he said it, but I'm not sure how to respond. I ignore the romantic undertones of the word date and push the conversation on. Uh... When uh, did you undercook? My parents divorced when I was a young child and I moved in with my father. He was always busy with work and didn't have much time to make family dinner, so we always ordered out. I miss my mother's home homemade meals. But the two of us didn't leave on good terms, so instead I turned to the internet and cooking shows to teach me how to make my own meals. My heart constricts as Liam tells me his story. It's hard to imagine eating dinner alone every night. Even when I'm home late from, from work late, my sister or one of my parents will stay up and talk to me while I eat. 
Do you live by yourself? Yes, but don't give me those eyes of pity. I've always well, how was that meant to make things better? Even when I lived with my father, it taught me how to be independent, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Being independent is not a bad thing, but doesn't that get lonely? I talk to Mrs. V every morning. Plus there's Camilla. And Wyatt, sometimes. <laughs> he looks so annoyed. The way he says Wyatt's name is if it's grating on his tongue. What's the deal? Point is, I have people to talk to. It's not a bad lifestyle. I have more time to do what I want. <laughs> more time to learn how to cook fancy gourmet meals. The tension that's been building up begins to dissipate. Despite the awkward questions I might have been asking, Liam is very open with me, which I really appreciate. There's time to binge watch crime shows, read books. Oh, I'm very, sometimes my microphone does this weird spike and it just went off in my headphones and scared me. And learned new hobbies. I wish I knew why I did that. For example, right now I'm learning how to do lanyards and I'm teaching Mrs. V all the stitches during our shifts. Lanyards? You mean those plastic cords people use to make keychains and stuff, right? Liam nods. He's a grafter. <laughs> I want to see. Oh. Okay, but imagine this. Liam needing them ugly Christmas sweaters. Just think about that. <laughs> Matching ugly Christmas sweaters knitted by hand by Liam. I want it. <laughs> Liam nods. The two of us are silent as we enjoy each other's company. The oven timers begin to go in there. <laughs> the oven's timer begins to go off. Has it really been 15 minutes already? Liam stands up and dusts off his pants. Head into the dining room. It's the door on your left. I'll bring the food to you, so make yourself comfortable. I follow Liam and turn when he heads into the kitchen. The dining room has the same modern yet classy style that the living room does. The table is full of delicious smelling food and even more is placed on the counter beside it. I take a seat with my back to the door so I can look out the screen door leading into Liam's backyard. He must be making a lot of money at the resort to be able to afford a place like this. I live with my parents and my sister, but... Even then, I feel like our home is barely big enough to feed all four of us sometimes. First off, we have some olives and cheese. Ooh, olives. Liam walks into the room with a platter in his hands. He places it gingerly in the center of the table. I really don't think I can eat so much food, but because Liam put such a great amount of effort, I'm going to at least try. He sits down across from me after getting two glasses after get, getting two glass china plates from the kitchen. You really didn't have to go through all this trouble for me. Nonsense. I only want the best for my friends. I love him, he's so cute. I can't help but smile at that. Yes, this is what I wanted. For us to be able to be friends and hang out like this. Perhaps less formally next time, but this is a great start. The two of us eat through at least three courses chatting about anything that comes to mind. It becomes clear that as we get deeper into our conversation, Liam begins to pull further and farther away. Something is bothering him. Spill it. Hmm? You were so happy to have me here before and now three quarters in, you're all sad and junk. What's up? I'm not sad, I'm... <sighs> His voice trails off for a moment and he... Let's out a pain sigh. I'm just a little stressed out. I feel guilty that I'm having fun with you tonight instead of working on my event at the resort. I know my life shouldn't be centered around Marisol Bay, but my future depends on this event succeeding. That's understandable. You really care about Marisol Bay. He nods. 
I do. I only fear about the outcome of having both events on the same day. I assume you'll be helping Brooke. It is, after all, your side of the resort that will be... that will be succeeding in the end. Can't both the recreational and luxury sides prosper? There are two events that cater to different demographics. I see both being successful. I think it's a little idealistic to have such an outlook. A divided operation is going to stay divided. Karu, I love Marisol Bay, and I want to see it become the upsell resort. It's, it's been trans transforming into already. People call me an elitist and snobby, but I don't think it's wrong of, wrong of me to have finer tastes. I just can't see Marisol Bay as a family resort any longer. The business will make more money and will be more exclusive, which can lead to a spike in popularity. There are many benefits to this. <laughs> you don't need to sell me on your idea. I like that you're passionate about it. I want to see your future succeed. But I also want Wyatt and Brooke's dreams to come true as well. You said you weren't going to talk about work. Liar, liar, pants on fire. So, I can't make my decision right now without thinking about it some more. I owe you a well thought out answer. Liam, where? I think about it. What are we? Friends, yes, but I feel like we're more than that as well. More than just friends. We're getting closer every day. We spend time together. I'm learning more about you, and I like the person I'm finding out about. I don't know what that means in the long run, but I can confidently tell you right now that I am on your side no matter what. Even if I'm not there at your event physically, I'm cheering you on. You love Marisol Bay, and it's time to show your boss that. So take a breather. I'm not loose for this afternoon. We have two courses left. Your work will be there tomorrow, but me sitting at your dining table eating this delicious meal will not. Liam smiles, gradually getting bigger. He places down his fork and gazes at me. Right. You're right. Knowing you support me means a lot. It'll make going on this journey that much easier. He pauses for a moment, and then grabs my hand over the table. I'm taken aback, but I stay there frozen in place. I haven't told a lot of people this, but... When I was younger, I used to visit Marisol Bay all the time with my family. They were holding hands! <laughs> but now that I'm all alone and things aren't the same... I want the resort to grow with me. Some people might think that's selfish, but having spent so much of my time there, I think the place needs to move on. Things change. Sometimes people need to grow up and move on. I respect that and I understand why that's so important to Liam. Does moving on mean forgetting everything? No. Take you, for example, Cairo. I don't want to erase you from my memories. If my idea succeeds, I want you... Th I want there to be a spot for you to come back to. Preferably not as a pirate. I see an opportunity to take... to tease him, and I take it. You mean to say... you don't want a pirate in a suit at, Mar at Murder La Pearl? As dashing as you would look? No. I can't say that I do. The two of us talk for a while longer. I can be myself with Liam and I think he feels the same way. I want to get to know him even more and see where our journey will take us. For now, I'm going to spend my time cheering him on until the event is over and we both have a second to breathe. When we finish the food, I'm practically waddling to the front door. Better food than Murder La Pal, huh? Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Bite me back again sometime, five-star chef. Be welcome anytime. Eating alone is not as enjoyable as eating with someone else. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me today. Oh, I love his blush. He's so cute when he blushes. 
I like talking to you, so anytime. I'm all ears. I will take you up on that offer. It's getting late, and we both have an early shift tomorrow, so we say our goodbyes, and I leave feeling content on how things have gone. I have a lot to think about now. Whose dreams am I crushing, and whose am I trying to help succeed? This is something I'm definitely going to have to sleep on, but... I should make my decision tomorrow, so that preparations can begin. I hardly slept a wink last night. I left Liam's house so stuffed from his delicious cooking. I assumed I'd sleep like a baby as soon as my head hit the pillow, but that wasn't the case at all. Instead, I tossed and turned all night, thinking about which event I'm going to offer my help to. I want to support everyone, but I can only physically be at one place at a time. Both Wyatt and Brooke want to see the resort made a place for family to make memories. Liam wants to see the resort grow and evolve into a luxury palace he imagines. I thought long and hard about where my interests lie, and I know that I have to go with my gut. I told Wyatt and Brooke to meet me in the lobby before my shift, so I can say my decision to both of them and Liam without having to repeat myself. I'm nervous, but I have to do it. Walking into the resort with my usual coffee in hand, I'm greeted by a group of people. Liam, Mrs. V, Wyatt, and Brooke are all conversing in a, in a circle, like a group of friends who haven't seen each other in a while. When they hear me walk in, all eyes fall to me. Cairo, good morning. Captain. Hey, Captain. Cairo. Cairo, dear. Good to see you. Liam nods at me in acknowledgement, ending the greeting ritual of the group. You're looking a little pale, Cairo. Are you okay? White is grinning. His elbows propped against the concierge desk right next to Liam, who was quietly typing on a keyboard. Mm. Oh, is our little Cairo nervous to tell us his event he's going to be helping with? White is all smiles, acting as if this decision is a small one. <laughs> it's important because it speaks to who's dreaming. I want to invest in more. Which one of my friends do I want to stand side by side with and help achieve their goals? At first I thought it would be a simple choice. I see Liam and Mrs. V every single morning greeting me with their warm smiles. They were the first people I met here and continue to be a great source of positivity. Liam and Mrs. And Mrs. V have opened their world to me and allowed me to join them in the lobby for their the early morning chats and at Melody Lapel for lunch. I've been having so much fun getting to know them both more, especially Liam. I feel like I can be myself around him and he's starting to open up to me as well. With our growing closeness, it would seem like a no-brainer to side with Liam. Though, if I learned anything in life, it's that things are never simple. Cairo. Well, Cairo? Hearing Liam's voice calling to me, I snap out of my thoughts and look up. He has stepped away from the computer, but is still standing behind the concierge desk with Mrs. V. Huh? Hmm? I don't know about the others, but... Me and Mrs. V have discussed our event, and we've decided that if you choose not to join us, we will not- we will hold nothing against you. Do what you must. Yes, we understand wanting to help all your friends. Do what you think is right for you. People who are meant to be in your life will remain after- even after that. She's right, you know. This event shouldn't destroy any friendships along the way. If you don't want to help Wyatt and I, neither of us will be upset. I might be a little upset, but... That's only because that means less time we get to spend together. <laughs> Wyatt winks at me. So, if you're sure about your answer, don't keep us waiting. Let us know. I take in a deep breath. Help White and Brooke. Help Mrs. V and Liam. <laughs> Wouldn't helping White and Brooke be a shock with them right now? <sighs> help Liam and Mrs. V. I, I want to help Liam and Mrs. V with their event. Boo. Oh, boo. 
Rook juts out her lower jaw and mimics a sniffle. I promise they wouldn't get upset, but I'm a little teary-eyed at not having Captain Bailey around. I'm sorry, I... Before I can finish, she giggles a bit and nods her head reassuringly at me. I'm only kidding. The event is going to be amazing, and while I'm not saying it's a competition... She looks over at Wyatt, who has a devious look in his eyes. Recreational activities are going to be the talk of the resort until summer ends. No contest. Oh, oh you think so? I pull the fabric of my... What? I pull the fabric of my shirt up from my shoulder. I think you underestimate the power of me in formal attire. Really? I can't imagine it being better than a pirate suit. I think Kyra... I think Kyra was more appealing than Captain Bailey. He doesn't need to hide behind some gimmicks to get people to like him. Though Liam's words are meant to sound encouraging to me, there's a sting to them as he directs them towards Liam. Uh, Wyatt. Wyatt simply shrugs his shoulders in response. Captain. It's always good to have a little fun. Don't let this man ever work, you captain. Enough. The two of you never seem to get along, do you? We will have no more arguments. Both events will be great. Kairu, we look forward to working with you some more. It's an honor. Right, well, I need to get ready to open the lookout. I'll go with you and get my spot ready on the beach. See you there, Kairu. I nod my head at him. Hi, hi, matey. When the two of them leave, I turn my full attention to Liam and Mrs. V. Kyra? Why you pick to work with us? I know why event is far, is far superior, but is that all there is to it? His confident demeanor slowly shifts to one that is more uncertain. To be completely honest, I'm not investing my time because of the kind of event you're holding. I'm sure the business dinner will go over well with guests, but I believe in you and your dream, Liam. I want to see you succeed, more than anything. After our dinner last night, I realized just how much this resort means to you. You're not doing this to spite Liam and Brooke. You are, tr you are really genuinely wanting to make a difference at Marisol Bay. <laughs> There's, a si There's silence for a moment, and then I see Mrs. V wink at me. Liam's face is tinted red, and he instantly looks at the computer screen in front of him. Thank you. Thank you, Kairu. Having you on board is going to make things a lot easier. And we expect you to see we expect to see you at Murdella Pearl during your lunch breaks from now on. Sir, yes, sir. I say goodbye to the pair and head over to the Riptide before my shift begins. I need to change into my costume, though I'm looking forward to having another meal with Liam. Carmella will not be as enthusiastic. The days go by pretty quickly. Ooh, look at him in his suit! The days go by pretty quickly as they work alongside Liam, Mrs. V, and Carmella. While they get along with some more than others, we all seem to work efficiently together like a well oiled machine. Now that it's the day of the event, I'm feeling confident that all the hard work we put into preparing it will pay off. Fix your tie. Oh god, there's no pleasing this woman! The older woman reaches over to straighten my tie and then dust my vest off with the back of her hand. Some old kid in the... Same old kid in the tank top and sneakers. She rolls her eyes, but I can't help but laugh. At first I thought this would be a really hard vent for me to run because I'm not exactly oozing with luxurious, en luxurious energy, but I'm actually having a good time. Working with Liam, Mrs. V, and yes, even Carmilla. Thanks for the encouragement. <laughs> if not I, who will provide your sorry excuse for a socialite with proper advice? She's smiling as she says this. Carmilla has taken on the role of my unofficial mentor into the role of the ex 
world of expensive taste and classy behavior. Well, you are absolutely right. How could I navigate this world without you? He'd be lost at sea. Camilla rolls her eyes at the joke. Liam looks particularly proud of himself. Your bonds are getting better. I had a good teacher telling me to lighten up. Hear that, Camilla? Looks like I'm the best teacher here. Don't be so proud of teaching him nonsense like that. <laughs> you should try to lighten up too, Camilla. I think Kyrie was onto something. A little light-hearted laughter could go a long way. Well, that's why he's here, so I don't have to bother. She stops herself. So I don't have to do anything but charm the guests. I roll my eyes. She looks like the most casual one here now. <laughs> Everything is all set? Yes. Do you have your script, Kairu? I reach into the pocket of my slacks and... I hold up the folded paper. I don't really think I need one, but Camilla insists. Camilla, go check on things with our special guest. I need to talk to Kairu about something. He shoes her away and I'm kind of glad because I want to ask Liam about this script about this script Camilla wrote for me. It's very rigid. I'm expected to address the audience as if they're attending some elaborate board meeting. Pretty sure none of the guests are here. Here are shareholders of the resort. Focusing on how the guests can spend their money seems redundant and like a complete waste of time. Camilla walks off and when she's out of sight, Liam lets her sigh. He takes the paper from my hand and, without warning, tears it up into pieces. He places a, a small bit of paper into his blazer pocket. We don't need that. It's not Camilla's show. It's yours. You want to take the guests how you see fit. She has a lot of knowledge about the clientele and their wallets, but we want people talking about our resort beyond what the black card can afford them. Your speech should leave a lasting impression on the guests. Make this night a fun one for everyone. Right. No pressure. I know that you're capable of providing a good example because every time I'm with you, I'm having a great time. We've got magic Kyrie charm. <laughs> magic Kyrie charm, right? <laughs> I guess I can get... I can do that, I guess. One more thing. I don't mean to scare you, but the resort owner will be here to evaluate the events, turn out, and impact. I feel a pit growing in my stomach. Oh no. There's nothing to be worried about. If you need help, I'm always here. Liam is trusting me with entertaining the guests of Marisol Bay, not as Captain Bailey, but as Cairo. All while the owner watches. I'm totally not nervous at all. Liam reaches out and places two hands on my shoulders. I look up into his vibrant blue eyes and my worries melt away. He believes in me. I have to do this and give it my all for Liam. Don't worry. You've got this. I've got this. <laughs> That's really cute. I nod my head, trying to hype myself up with Liam's words. The two of us do our last minute preparations before the event officially starts. Oh, it's so pretty at night, too. There are so many people seated at Murder La Pal, despite the late night affair. There's a low classical song being played from the speakers Carmela set up on the beach, not too far away from the restaurant. Carmela has also enforced the dress code. Button up shirts, dresses, skirts, and the like all must be worn to be allowed entry. Learning an outfit for today's occasion wasn't the easiest thing. I haven't had to wear formal clothes in a long time. So we needed to go to the store and pick something out that made me look the part that Camilla has created for me. I think I did a pretty good job if I do say so myself. I look up at the crowd for any familiar faces that I may have seen at, Pi at Pirate's Cove, but I don't recognize anyone. I guess it makes sense. The guests who frequent the recreational side of the resort probably went to Brooks' event. I can't help but wonder how it's going. I hope she and Wyatt made it everything they wanted it to be. My eyes land on Liam, standing against the back wall to the far right. He's chatting with an older man with a cleanly pressed suit 
They exchange a few words and then head towards a table to sit. Is that the owner? My stomach twists and some knots. I'm beyond nervous, but if William thinks I can do it, I will try my best. The room quietens down as Camilla speaks into the microphone. This is it. On behalf of the staff and owner of Marisol Bay, we would like to welcome you all to the end of summer dinner party in celebration of our esteemed black card members. All of the food has been prepared in-house and your enjoyment we are providing and for your enjoyment we are providing entertainment. Kairu, if you will. She hands me the mic and I and steps to the side. All eyes are on me and suddenly I feel self-conscious. Stage fright is one thing, but this is something else entirely. It's a fear of failure, a fear of ruining the hard work that Liam, Camilla, and Mrs. V have put into this. I clean my throat, but I make sure I'm smiling to the crowd. Hi. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Cairo. <laughs> I work at Pirates Cove. I'd like to welcome you all. First, I'd like to welcome you all this evening. I found myself defaulting to Carmela's script. I, I know that Liam has trusted me to do this on my own, but I need a little help to make it through. <laughs> You're that pirate guy, aren't you? I see Camilla from the corner of my eye, and she doesn't seem too pleased with this man's outburst. But I decide to go with it. Right. <laughs> Archimedes, it is I, Captain Bailey of the Riptide. The man claps his hands together with delight. My kids love that. Cam Camilla seems to be getting more and more annoyed, but this is the this is only proving to me that. To, to me, one thing. Both sides of the island of the resort can coexist, in fact. Sir, if I may be so bold as to ask you a question? I can see me, I can see Liam watching me curiously from the corner of, his, of my eye. I'm sure that Camilla is fuming that I'm going off script, but she hasn't rushed in to take my microphone away yet. Of course, go ahead. Where is your child right now? Asleep in the hotel room? Heavens no. I wouldn't leave him alone while I go out and have fun. He's actually with my wife at the lookout for trivia night. And you chose not to go there, why? Cairo. Camilla's voice is stern, but I ignore it. I need to make my point clear. Liam stands up as quietly as he can and walks over to her side. Go ahead and speak. I assure the man... He seems more than happy to answer my questions, even in front of all the other dinner guests. <laughs> I actually proposed to my wife at this very restaurant. I love the upscale part of the resort, but I have a child now and he's not old enough to appreciate this kind of atmosphere. Still, I feel a loyalty to this place and want to see the place succeed. So, if there was a way for you to have your fancy dinners and time with your wife and child without Splitting up? Would that be ideal? Certainly. If the event at the lookout wasn't the same day as this event, I'd be able to go to both and spend time with my family. Interesting indeed. An experience that melds both luxury and recreational sides together. My voice trails off as I lock eyes with the owner of the place. He isn't moving an inch, not smiling or frowning. There is no indication of what he could be thinking right now. Enough. <laughs> she angry. Camilla stalks up to me and finally snatches the mic from me. She apologizes to all the guests and informs them I'm on my way out. I don't really have a choice, so I shrug and walk out of the place. I don't look to anyone to see their reactions because frankly I don't care. I think I got my point across well enough. I find myself at the hub, crossroads between both luxury side of the rest of the resort and the recreational. The event didn't go as planned, but I 
don't regret my actions for a single moment. I'm not qualified to make the decision on what kind of resort Marisol Bay should end up as. I was only here for a few short months. Some of the other staff members have been here for years, some even decades. They've seen far more than I have. When I needed to make a choice between helping Brooke and Wyatt or helping Liam, I realised something. I didn't want to have to choose. Why couldn't I be there for all of my friends' events? I often wondered how good friends Liam and Brooke would be if they didn't have the distaste of the opposing side of their minds. If Liam could let loose for a few hours and eat dinner at the lookout, and if Wyatt and Brooke tied up their hair and put on some fancy clothes for an evening out at Mads or the Pearl, they'd each see how great both places are. I can't imagine my summer having gone any better than it already has. All of the steak lunches I ate at Mad de la Pearl with, with Liam and Mrs. B, the laughs I shared with, like, what, with Wyatt on the beach of Pirate's Cove, and the gossip sessions I had with Brooke at the lookout. If there was only one side, regardless of what it was, I'd be missing out on so many different experiences. Half of my memories would just disappear. Marisol Bay is a place for families to have fun with their kids and for couples to share a drink by the ocean. There is no room for division. Footsteps shuffle towards me. They get closer and closer until finally the person has settled down on the beat on the bench beside me. I'm sorry. I look up into the pain eyes of Liam. He has nothing to be sorry about. I'm the one who turned his event into into a Q&A when people were just trying to enjoy themselves. I'm sure this wasn't how Liam saw the night going. I'm sorry that Carmela took the mic from you and told you to leave. She apologized for you like you did something wrong. I shattered her little fantasy. The guests don't see the resort like she does. Hell, I doubt they even see a luxury or recreational side. It's all just Marisol Bay to them. You were absolutely right. For all my years working reception, I never once heard someone talk poorly about one side or the other. People like to visit all the attractions that the resort offers. So then, where did this whole division come from? I don't understand. The resort doesn't have to be, to be split up if the guests don't want it that way. Is this just a profits thing? You know why I want the luxury side of the resort to succeed. And it isn't for the money. Yes, you want to erase your old memories and have the resort grow with you. He nods at me. This is what we talked about over dinner, but I want to support Liam in his endeavours, but when I heard the guest talking about how he couldn't spend time on his vacation with his son, something dawned on me. Liam's want for Marisol Bay are selfish. For, there's nothing wrong with creating an upscale experience for guests, but not at the cost of the families who love to visit here. It would not only rewrite his memories, but the memories of the people like Wyatt who grew up and enjoy going here. <sighs> I support you in your want to create new memories and to help the luxury side of the hotel grow, but... He looks at me expectantly. I can't support the idea of creating an experience that erases the happiness of others. I didn't realise the magnitude of those actions until I spoke to that guest earlier. Vacations are supposed to be spent with people you care about. You're not supposed to be on your own. A silence passed between the two of us. <laughs> the way the light from the mood dances on Liam's face as he gazes up into the sky is captivating. It's almost as if I'm seeing a different side of him. He's usually smug and confident. His, his usual smug and confident smirk is gone. Not even a thin limp grimace. Even, even his thin-lipped grimace is gone. I only see a peaceful serenity that I'm afraid I'd ruin if I spoke up. I agree with you. I've been looking at this thing wrong. He reaches up and pushes a strand of hair from his face. His hand then falls back towards his thighs as he leans forward slightly. When I was a child, my parents were always fighting was very clear to me from a young age that it would only ever end in one way. 
divorce. I listen closely to Liam as he speaks. My older brother never, never saw it that way. He always held on to the idea that our parents were happy. He was always the more carefree type that never let anything bother him. He'd get so excited when our parents took us to Marisol Bay because we'd do things like watch movies, eat dinner together, even hang out at the beach. Liam begins to squeeze his hands together as he recalls the memory. That's a good thing, isn't it? Happy memories? Liam shakes his hand, head and turns to me with a slight tear building up in his eye. I want to take away all the pain, but I know that I can't give him a new past. He has to be able to move on all by himself. I hate those memories, because they remind me of something that will never happen again. The smiles on my parents' faces as they told stories around the campfire or the portrait together on the boardwalk, all a representation of a family that failed to be whole. My father met a younger and prettier girl that he ended up marrying and my mother fell into a deep depression. The two of them were constantly arguing about money so loudly that sometimes the neighbours would hear them and, and let me and my brother sleep at their house. Yet, I often asked myself how my family could be so happy together during our vacations at Marisol Bay. The recreational side of the facility reminds me of a family that doesn't exist anymore. When I started working here, I saw a whole different side of the place. The luxury side taught me how to love it all over again. No laughing children or family portraits, just a sophisticated and mature experience. I was instantly enchanted by it. I wanted to capture that happiness and hold on to it. But everyone's happiness is different. I can't use my memories as a means to prevent others from having their own. There's a way for people to enjoy themselves with both experiences. As Liam finishes his speech, he reaches up and wipes his eyes. <laughs> I don't know how long he's been holding in this pain about the divorce of his parents, but he's letting it all out now. I move in closer to him and pull him towards me in a hug. Liam wraps his arm around me and places his face in the crook of my neck. I feel his tears wetting my new dress shirt, but oh, that doesn't matter. The best way to enjoy Marisol Bay is by experiencing all it has to offer. Amenities, beautiful scenery, the amazing stuff. Trying to tear it down to create an experience you'll feel better about is taking the easy way out. It's not fair to people like Brooke or Wyatt. Or you. I wanted you to have the best summer and you're here dealing with me like this. I rub his back with my right hand. He pulls away slightly and looks up at me. That's not a bother. To be perfectly honest, you are one of the reasons this has been a summer I don't think I'm going to ever forget. Your passion for your job and your dreams speak volumes. It has been so fun getting to know you and spending more time with you. I don't regret helping you organize your event. I chose to support- I will choose to support you over and over again. <laughs> You're the reason I'm seeing this place in a whole new light. Not only from your words earlier, but because I never would have even stepped foot in Pirate's Cove, let alone rendered the pirate mascot there. There's something magnetizing about you, Cairo. I can't help but want to be by your side, so I can't think of only myself going forward. I won't try to change Marisol Bay, the place where we met, because I knew him swallow hard and taking a deep breath. The terrible movies on the beach, the lunches spent at Marisol up uh, Mar de la Pearl, and the morning conversations, these are all reasons I look forward to coming here every single day. You're real. I know when I take a step back and think about these memories again, 
even in 10 years, even if in 10 years we're not friends anymore, that these feelings between the two of us are real. There isn't any hidden angle sn anger sneaking up on us. Just two guys who really... He stops and straightens himself up. He turns away slightly from me. I can't quite make the assertion yet because I don't know how you feel about me, but... I really like you, Cairo. A lot. I can't stop thinking about you. My heart races when I see you come into the room into a room and I always want to hear your voice. <laughs> you don't have to feel the same way, just knowing you support me is enough. <laughs> now I'm the one who is speechless. The two of us sit in silence. Neither look at the other. I have to tell Liam how I feel. I feel the same way about you. I find myself setting my alarm to wake up extra early so I don't miss my morning conversation with you. I try to sneak in a text to you during the workday to let you know I'm thinking about you and, well, I'm always thinking of more ways we can spend time together. I'm never going to forget my summer here because of you. You already accomplished your deed. Your goal? Your goal. I place a hand on my heart. I couldn't have asked for a better person to make memories with. Oh. Thanks for being so great. As I say this, I feel Liam inch closer to me. I shut my eyes, allowing the moment to take over. The cold wind caresses my flaming cheek, the two of us leaning closer to each other. Liam's arms snake around my waist and mine find their way around his neck. When we finally pull away from our kiss, Liam lets, a breath, lets out a breathy laugh. <laughs> you did say I underestimate your power in a suit. I can't help but laugh along the, alongside him. Oh? oh, you like this look on me? Yeah. Maybe I can take you somewhere nice on an official date. Hmm. Only because I like how dapper you look in a blazer. The two of us laugh alongside each other. Uh, Liam reaches out to curl his fingers around mine and the two of us gaze into the night sky together. This moment... It's perfect. Oh, I wish it could last forever, but... Alas... Your event... You proved your point. So nothing Camilla does is going to change what happened. The guests are going to enjoy a nice dinner. And I'm going to lack, relax away from work for a little. <laughs> That's a great idea. We sit out there long enough for the guests to start shuffling out into the hub. And we know it's time to go. We kiss one more time and say our goodbyes. I'm feeling giddy, but... Even more so, refreshed. And... Excited to come back to work again tomorrow. Almost two weeks have passed since the event at the resort. From what I've heard, Liam and Brooke's event went better than ours did. They had some really fun trivia questions, delicious fried food, and a nice 10 out of people. No mass destruction, destruction has occurred. The owner hasn't declared one side of the resort better and shut the other down immediately. Everything has gone back to normal. I still come to work every morning with a large coffee and Spend some time speaking with Liam and Mrs. V. Wyatt stops by Pirate's Cove every single day to tease me and I drive Brooke home as per usual. The only thing that's different is the melancholic feeling that doesn't seem to leave my gut as the day goes by. Summer is almost over, which means my contract as a resort entertainer is ending. Once the weather gets colder, Marisol Bay won't need a pirate on the beach. To my understanding, during the colder months, the beachfront activities are shut down and more indoor events are offered. Liam, Mrs. V, and Amelia will definitely still have their jobs, but I don't know about the other staff members like Brooke and Camilla. And what about Wyatt? Will he stop coming around too? <sighs> Didn't expect to get so attached to Marisol Bay. When I applied for this job, I knew it was a seasonal position. My plan was to simply make it through and get my letter of recommendation at the end of this journey. 
Now I'm fearful that the friends I've made here won't remember me when I leave. Will they continue to be wrapped up in the pool of Marathor Bay? The Riptide comes into view. There's going to be another meeting today before we all head out to our stations. I grip my coffee tightly. I can only imagine it's about the upcoming end of some of activities. Stealing myself, I take a breath and enter the ship. When I enter the cafeteria, I'm greeted by some familiar faces. Sitting at a table in the front are Mrs. V, Liam, Camilla. Liam and Camilla are chatting about something while Mrs. V nods along, <laughs> munching on a bagel. At another table behind are Amelia and Brooke. Brooke is leaning over the table showing Amelia her phone. The very back is Wyatt, standing by himself against one of the metal fridges. I reach up and rub my eyes to make sure what I'm seeing is really there. Why is Wyatt here? He isn't a member of the staff. Mm -hmm. Wyatt looks up and the two of us lock eyes. He smiles and waves at me. I give him a slight nod, though I don't make my way over there. I already know my place is at the front of the room with Liam. I walk over towards the trio, trio and take a seat next to Liam and across from Carmella and Mrs. V. Look who it is! The man who completely sabotaged my event! Carmella is quick to snap at me before I can even get out a simple greeting to the trio. It's been two weeks and she's still harboring these negative feelings towards me. I think the event went exceptionally well. That is, until you kick Cairo out. That was lame. <laughs> that was lame. Lame? The only lame thing was you ripping up my script without even thinking about consulting me. If you're going to ignore me anyway, I shouldn't have even bothered. Camilla is still acting as if Liam wasn't the one in charge of the event the entire time. She was supposed to be following his lead, not the other way around. Mrs. V, smiling weakly, reaches over and places a palm on Carmella's arm. That's enough, Carmella. Perhaps we can go and sit somewhere else. Gladly. <laughs> go on, shoot, shoot. Carmella stands up and gathers her designer purse. Mrs. V stands up as well, not before winking at me and following Carmella to another table. <laughs> Sorry about that. I tried to tell Camilla that I was the one who instructed you to go off script, but she still holds a grudge against you anyway. She'll get over it soon, and you'll be able to come back to Madela Pearl without having a glare on your back. And here I thought our lunch dates at the hub were because you wanted to broaden your horizons. <laughs> but I might think sitting with you while we watch people is an ideal moment. You're perfect. His face is bright red. He clears his throat and scratches the back of his head. Uh, I mean to say that the moment is perfect. The scenery and the food and... I <laughs> can nudge him with my right elbow. And me. It's okay. You can say it. I feel the same way about you. Even if you can't appreciate really terrible movies that are actually really great movies. <laughs> I'm willing to give more terrible movies a shot. Bring any movie you want to my place. I can cook some dinner for us and we can watch them together. That sounds like an amazing time. I'll be there. Just say the word. I see Liam almost every single morning at work and whoopsie, and we call each other on our days off. Though neither of us really had time to hang out outside of Marisol Bay. Once the summer rush is over, Perhaps we'll have the opportunity again. The doors open, shattering my thoughts. A man I've definitely seen before, and is holding a clipboard similar to the one Amelia usually carries around. I recognize him as the guy that was sitting with Liam at Madela Pearl when the, the business dinner was happening. Huh? The owner? Liam nods. <laughs> my voice hitches in my throat. Liam places a hand on my arm and smiles, re smiles reassuringly to me. Honestly, I'm surprised he isn't laughing at me. You listen to Brooke's theories too much. 
I talked to the owner after the event, and he told me personally that he liked how spoken you were. He made it a point to say that he got a lot of good information out of the guests that night. Oh? He did? I wouldn't lie to you. Before I can say anything more, the owner begins to address the room. Thank you for joining me, everyone. The end of summer evaluations are available, so if you can all quiet down, I can share the results. The room goes deathly silent. Everyone is looking at each other. Even Amelia seems a bit confused. Wyatt and Liam, if you will please stand by me as I make these announcements. I watch Liam curiously as he stands up and heads to the front of the room, to stand beside the owner and Wyatt. Hello everyone. For those of you who are new to the staff and don't know who I am, my name is Ken Phillips, and I'm the owner of Marisol Bay Resort. The two men standing beside me are people most of you know fondly. My sons, Wyatt and Liam. I nearly joked in my own spit when Mrs. Mr. Phillips says that. Wyatt and Liam are his sons? I can see the mischievous look in Wyatt's eyes, though Liam seems as stone-faced as ever. I try to make eye contact with Brooke or Amelia, but they're both pretty absorbed by the boss's words. When I look to Mrs. V, she only smiles at me. She knew this all along. Of course she did. Having been around as long as she has. A melancholic feeling sizzled in my stomach as I see the two men I have grown to care for standing in front of me. So this is why they wanted their events to go so perfectly. Marisol Bay is their father's resort. Everything starts to fall into place as I make sense of the situation. Wyatt and Leon's relationship struck me as interesting when I first saw them together. Wyatt amped up the joke while Liam seemed to get more and more annoyed. Mrs. V had tried to be the mediator. Both men had talked to me about their relationships with their family. Wyatt held on to happy memories of him and his brother while Liam told me he wanted to move past it. They each spoke of a divorce and have both clearly handled it very differently. Wyatt went with his mother and Liam stayed here with his dad. It makes complete sense now why Wyatt was so insistent on making this the best event of the, of the summer and why Wyatt wanted his mother to be here for Brooke's event. The resort is important to both of them, but in two very different ways. Hello everyone. Good to see you beautiful people. Liam doesn't see anything. He just rolls his eyes in response. He doesn't want to be standing up there next to his older brother. This summer, I was finally able to convince both my sons to help with the resort. And I tasked them with running opposite opposing sides. Wyatt was in charge of the recreational side, while Liam spearheaded the luxurious side. They both thought it would be better if the rest of the staff had no idea. What the? This way, the results they achieved would be organic and true to the guests of Marisol Bay. Two weeks ago, they both held an event in which I got to see firsthand how each site operates. Now, I know about the rumours that I want to shut down one side of Marisol Bay and that simply isn't true. This place has grown to be what it is because of the guests and the staff who put so much love into it. I wouldn't change it for the world. Rather, I was simply trying to see if I could get my sons on the same page. I don't know if I accomplished that, but I hope that by working at Marisol Bay, they both discovered why I opened this place and why it means so much to our family. And so, our evaluations for today are for the resort as a whole and for my son's efforts. I'd like to hear anything you have to say. I learned that you don't have to be diversive to create an authentic experience. Liam's eyes fall onto me and I can't help but smile at him. The two of us have come so far together, but most of all Liam has figured out that 
what should really matter to him. But even more than that, I learned that it's okay to have a little fun every once in a while. It's okay that everything isn't perfectly scripted. It's alright for me to want to move on from my past as long as I recognise what it did for me. Everyone goes around the room talking about what we learned, so I was able to sneak away before it was my turn. Everything about this summer has been so surreal. I didn't quite think that I'm ready for it to end just yet. As I stand in the centre of the hub, I can't help but close my eyes and remember my first day. I complain so much because I would be a mascot, though I learned quickly just how important my position was. I spent my summer making people smile and giving them memories that will last for years to come. I, sp I met so many wonderful, interesting, unique and caring people. So now that it's all coming to an end, I'm happy to have experienced it all. Even if I won't be coming back to Marisol Bay next week. The memories I've made and the people I've grown close to are so much more powerful than a simple goodbye. I feel a light tap on my shoulder and I spin around to see the man who has captured almost all my thoughts this summer. Liam Phillips. Oh good. You didn't get changed for your shift yet. He looks slightly out of breath and I wondered if he's run out to catch up with me. You okay? Oh, yeah, I went to the locker rooms because I thought you were changing into your costume, but you weren't there. Then I went to your station, but you weren't there either, so... He takes a large gulp of air and wipes a small bead of sweat from his brow. I can't help but laugh. It's really adorable. Hey. Me. Don't laugh. We can't all have your stamina, alright? I hold my hands up in front of me. Alright, alright. What was so important that you had to rush to my side? First off, I want to apologise for never telling you that Wyatt is my brother and that the owner of Marisol Bay is my father. <sighs> I mean, it makes sense why you kept it hidden. You wanted to make a change at Marisol Bay without the distractions. The reason why Marisol Bay is so important to Liam is because this result is his past, present, and most likely his future too. I can't fault him for keeping this information close to his heart. Plus, you and Wyatt. I let the word hang in the air. I can't comprehend what it must feel like to be either of the men in their situation, but I want what's best for both of them. Things are complicated with my family. It isn't the same as when Wyatt and I were little. Aside from our time at the resort, I don't really see Wyatt around much. Wyatt and I are not close anymore. I thought that was something I was okay with, I was okay living with, but after our conversation the other day... He stumbles on his words and as he reaches up to touch his lips, I figured out that Liam is a really withdrawn guy when it comes to matters of the heart. He won't shout out of the rooftop that he cares about, but I know he really does appreciate me. <laughs> when we kissed, yeah. I was supposed to remember something else from that evening? <laughs> Liam rallies his eyes, but I see his lips upturn into a smile. You've convinced me that the resort shouldn't be exclusively recreational or exclusively luxurious. I thought that by creating an upscale experience, I'd erase Wyatt and my mother from my memories, but it doesn't work like that. I... I don't want to lose either of them. I don't want to forget about the fun times we used to have. I, I just want to... He lets out a sigh. I want to mend my relationship with my family, but I'm afraid I'll get attached again and things will fall apart. You'll never know if you don't try. Imagine the memories you're missing out on, making with Wyatt and your mum. You're right, but it's going to take some time. I'll be here every step of the way. Speaking of here... 
He grabs hold of my hands, and I look up into those blue eyes that I love so much. The other reason I chased you out here is because I wanted to tell you that this isn't your last week at Marisol Bay. Huh? Effective immediately. You're the full-time in-house entertainer at Marisol Bay Resort. If you want the opportunity, of course. What? I tilt my head to the side. Did he just say I could be a full-time entertainer at Marisol Bay? My father and I both agreed that you bring something refreshing to Marisol Bay. A lot of our reviews this summer mentioned Pirate's Cove as their favourite attraction. I don't believe that's because of the water slides. I don't exactly know what your next character role is going to be, but Marisol Bay still wants you here with us. I lean up and capture Liam's lips with mine. Spending even more time with this magnificent man at this beautiful resort, doing what I love, it's the best thing I can imagine for myself right now. When we pull away, Liam looks breathless. That's a yes, by the way. I'm excited to keep working with you. Liam breaks out into a smile. I don't know what my mornings would be like without you. Whoa. I need to make some more memories here. With you. I want that too. The summer is over. I won't be stepping away from Marisol Bay after all. Hey, hey, hey. Ooh. Ooh. Yay. Oh, man. I loved <laughs> Liam. I think having done the two rats, Liam feels like the more, I guess, canon ending in that the two sides seem to be more cohesive together and you can mend the relationship between the brothers a little bit more if you end up with Liam um so that's exciting I love Liam so much I still want a snappy suspenders <laughs> um well that's it for Marisol Bay um I hope you enjoyed it I really enjoyed playing it um, uh, this was by Legend X Games, and they have a lot of other amazing games in across the different genres, so maybe we'll play some more of those. Um, but, as usual, hope you enjoyed the game. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you have any recommendations of what you'd like to see played, suggestions, requests, hit me up. Let me know what you want to see. But for now, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.